Uh, my name is Ji Pan Yang, and uh, I'm a software engineer uh, from Alibaba. Yeah, my name is Jingyi Chu from Inti, software engineer. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, today we're going to talk about uh, network telemetry in Sonic. So first we start with the uh, basic concept. Uh, what is network telemetry? Since there are many definitions, uh, many, some confusing about uh, network telemetry. So from our point of view, uh, at the daily operation of the data center network, uh, the operators need to have a full visibility of the network status uh, in real time or almost real time. So whenever there's some problem happen with a certain node or certain network segment, uh, the operators need to be notified immediately. Uh, so to fix the problem or isolate the problem in a timely manner. Uh, also, uh, whenever that's uh, uh, the operator want to be aware of any hotspot uh, in the network. Uh, so if that happens, uh, they want to take some preventive measures uh, when needed uh, to mitigate any negative impact. So uh, those are the two uh, major purpose of the, uh, the two major tasks of the daily operation. Um, so network uh, telemetry provides tools and interface uh, to collect the data to facilitate uh, those uh, kind of uh, data operation uh, tasks. So uh, there are some very common network uh, telemetry methods or tools or interfaces, uh, like SMP. I believe everyone here is familiar with it, or maybe like it probably. And syslog, CR, packet mirroring, uh, data um, telemetry, uh, we also call it uh, in inband telemetry. So these tools or uh, methods uh, works well in a regular enterprise network. And, uh, uh, but uh, for the hyperscale uh, data center network telemetry, uh, we have some um, uh, actual or uh, more requirements and uh, challenges. So uh, when the operator is taking care of this uh, large amount of net network nodes, they want to be able to collect uh, whatever data at any node whenever needed. So that uh, data collection uh, framework has to be very flexible and extensible. Uh, the second uh, requirement is the data collected uh, needs to be structured. Uh, if we take a syslog as as example, uh, experienced, a very experienced engineer is able to uh, get a lot of useful information from just looking at the syslog. But uh, for analysis system, the data has to be structured in order to for it to consume and to correlate all the data together. Uh, that is the very basic requirement. Uh, then uh, last but not least, uh, the transportation method or the encoding of those uh, uh, telemetry data has to be very efficient and uh, it should be uh, well understood by every party. So if we look at um, Sonic, uh, I think Rodney and uh, some other people already talked a lot about the internal uh, implementation architecture of, of Sonic. Sonic is pretty much a database-centric uh, nodes. So almost uh, all the critical data could be found in the Redis DB instance, which runs inside uh, Sonic. So the data in Redis DB, they could be subscribed or pulled uh, periodically uh, based on demand. And Sonic telemetry service should be able to provide the interface to collect uh, the data from uh, the databases. So uh, we also look at the gRPC, since we were talking about uh, we need to uh, get the data out efficiently. We feel that the GRPC is the right framework for network telemetry. It is uh, uh, highly efficient and uh, it supports data streaming. Uh, it also has a, a whole bunch of tooling and libraries uh, to facilitate your development work. And in the open config community, uh, they propose some GNMR spec and that push the uh, GRPC uh, further into the network uh, domain uh, for both uh, telemetry and the config. So in Sonic, uh, we utilize the, uh, the GRPC uh, with reference to uh, GMR for the telemetry implementation. So uh, here, 
uh, you can see that the network diagram, uh, the architecture uh, for uh, telemetry uh, modules. So in this module, we support both the uh, die-in mode and the die-out mode. The die-in mode means that uh, we have a server running inside the Sonic, and the remote client or remote collector could just subscribe any data. Uh, then upon either, uh, either upon a data change or periodically, we will stream the data out to the external collector. That is die-in mode. For die-out mode, uh, the operator could just pre-configure some uh, um, uh, pass or some data they, they want to monitor. So then the dial to client within uh, Sonic will automatically connect to uh, the external collector uh, to stream the data to it. Uh, we just discussed that uh, Sonic is a DB-centric uh, NOS. Uh, almost all data could be found in uh, the Redis instances. But not all data exists in uh, Redis, Redis DB. Uh, so we uh, also have another sub-module to collect those uh, uh, data not existing in the DB, like those ASIC data which could be fetched via some debug CR. So uh, this is uh, what I want to talk about. And next, I think, hand over to Xu from Thank you. Yeah, so. By, by the way, my name is Jenkins Shu from LinkedIn. Uh, I'm a software engineer uh, working on Sonic. Uh, so just to recap a little bit about the, the gRPC approach, right? So if you compare this gRPC to uh, like SMP, for example, it's much faster. You know, the, usually the SMP, you, if you configure on a device, it typically like the poor interval is probably like uh, 30 seconds or minutes, right? Uh, we'll see, well, for the gRPC, if we, we can do like one second Pull in the wall, we can pull like uh, uh, 6,000 uh, counters per second. You know, we just utilize like 1% of CPU. That's like on the, on the regular uh, white box. Uh, the other things, I mean, the SMP typically is a pulling mode, you know, uh, every like in the world you pull the, the data. But uh, for this GRPC approach, we can do a subscribe mode. We can subscribe any data you're interested in, and you can use a streaming mode or, or whatever you call event mode. Um, the other way, the other thing is, uh, is very easy to expand. Basically, if you want any any new data, you don't need like a, a write a SMP on the box, you know, to write a new OID. Those things uh, to expose the data. Uh, in fact, it's just a, a, a key value pair in your da database, right? You can directly get it. And some other like security things, you know, it could be uh, better because you use a T TSL the TLS thing. Uh, if you talk about the GRPC versus like syslog, and I think syslog has some uh, advantage uh, 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 versus this SMP, for example, they can have event-driven things, right? If a uh, link is going down or the BGP uh, uh, going down, maybe they have a write a syslog on a, uh, on a device. They can get those data like in real time. And uh, GRPC can also do that, right? If you're using a streaming mode. But uh, what GRPC can do more is, you know, it has more data, right? It has all, all kinds of things, like uh, interface stats, uh, route stats, everything, right? But, but the syslog is more like events. And of course, the gRPC is like a more formative data. Uh, look at the Sonic itself, uh, you know, uh, the databases, right? Uh, we, we talk about, you know, we have like uh, actually seven or eight databases there, seven databases there, and uh, all this data can be uh, streamed or uh, uh, pulled uh, by by the gRPC client, and it, as you can see, uh, we also support like a virtual path uh, kind of uh, uh, express expression, so that you can pull like all the counters under some Ethernet ports. For example, right, if you do use the second one, it, it's basically you can get the not the second one. The first one, for example, you can actually pull all the counters under the Ethernet port. If you re if you use the Ethernet, for example, the, the, the first case, if you use the Ethernet uh, 9, for example, then you can pull all the counters under that uh, the port. So it's it's very flexible. You know, you can subscribe to any data with uh, like this, this format. Um, yeah, I think we can maybe starting on the 
on the demo itself. So, um, so okay. So we have this uh, gRPC mechanism uh, the implement on a, a Sonic device. So what we can do with it, right? Uh, how do we do with it? Uh, so first, I think we need a collector, right, to collect all the information. And uh, this collector could be using a pooling mode, or could be using a, a streaming mode, uh, using dialing or dial out mode. Uh, then after the collect collector collected the information, then we need to save it somewhere, right? I think the, the very good this place is probably the time series database. So you can actually, uh, you don't need to care about the schema, and you can actually have the history of all the data. You know, you can go back to like one month back, what, what it happened on this interface, what uh, how much traffic is actually happening on this interface in the in in the last month, right? Uh, then of course this data can be uh, used by the GUI, or actually can uh, you can set up the rules uh, to send this, uh, you know, based on some threshold, for example, settings you can send to the uh, alert system. Uh, and also in the future, uh, um, you can uh, have this data uh, processed by some uh, processing pipeline. For example, you can use machine learning stuff to process the data, and uh, you can also take actions on those data, right? Uh, go back to like a GMI configuration model. You can actually go back to the Sonic device, and uh, for example, you can shut down some interface, or you can uh, shut down the uh, BGP link, right? Uh, okay, so here's the basically uh, the demo setup. Uh, so we are using a streaming uh, mode for this demo, and uh, the, all these components is actually built uh, on top of uh, open source, uh, open source things. You know, for example, time series database we use uh, Prometheus, and uh, the GUI we use uh, Grafana, and we also have a alert manager uh, connect to the time series database. And uh, we build this collector uh, also on top of some uh, GMI code. Uh, we uh, we need to get the code to get the data from the Sonic device. Then we set up a REST. Uh, a REST server, basically, to uh, provide the data to the time series database. Uh, so we have, a, I have a, like a few uh, demo scenarios here. Uh, the one, the, the the first one is very simple. It's basically basically showing the interface speed. You know, I can see the interface changes if I change the uh, application. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I will show the live demo here. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not. This, uh, as a matter of fact, this is done by by me like in two days, so it's not something <laughs> on the GitHub. Yeah, I, I just did like in the last few days. Um, okay, maybe you can go right to the demo. Uh, we will show a couple of things here. You know, they show the interface speed. We can see the changes. We can actually monitor the link, link states. Uh, especially, we can, uh, uh, you know, we can monitor like how many flaps in the past, how many minutes. And then you, uh, based on that the uh, uh, rule, you can actually send uh, alerts uh, to 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 my email, for example. And also we can monitor in the route, uh, for example, net net hop, uh, next hop changes. We can monitor uh, on the on the GUI. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Doesn't change. I guess I have to exit from. Uh, yeah, I have to exit from the uh, demo, uh, the presentation mode. Okay, so yeah, so here's the uh, oh, what's going on? Okay, so I have a couple of uh, panels here. The first panel is the interface speed. Uh, maybe I haven't explained where what we're trying to do here. So. We have three servers here. Okay, server one, two, three. Uh, basically, server one and two is sending traffic to uh, server th uh, three. One and two send to three. So actually, uh, they are all uh, 10 gig interfaces. So uh, the application is actually capable of sending uh, full speed, wide speed. So on the on the egress side, uh, it will get uh, get congested, and then uh, basically it will because the TCP flow, then it will back. Uh, back to the server one and two, they they will share the the bandwidth. Uh, okay, we can. I already started traffic, so this is six and seven. As you can see, there's the sending roughly 
five gig each. Uh, on the UI, you can also s oh, let's go. On the UI, you can see uh, we have uh, the ingress speed of one port and the other ports. They are basically five gig roughly, and then uh, the output speed is ten gig. And uh, I can just, sh for example, disable this application for the moment, and and you should be able to see the traffic dropping for one app uh, application, and the other one will get ten gig. So I mean that's that's very simple, but uh, the the point is here we can pull the the interval is very small. It's like one second right now, you know, uh, rather than like SMP probably like thirty seconds or even minutes. So you can detect those uh, uh, interface speeds much much faster. And then uh, I can run the the traffic back again. It's basically iperf traffic. And you should be able to see, oh, yeah, it should come back. Uh, so they should share the span with again. That's basically roughly five gig each. Uh, the second thing, the second demo is we want to show the uh, lin uh, the interface uh, status, right? So this is the, uh, by the way, this is the Sonic Sonic's box, right? It's running uh, different dockers here. Maybe nobody showed this. Uh, one of the dockers is a telemetry. Basically, it's running a gRPC server here. And you can log into that docker. And uh, if you do a PS, right, you can show, uh, actually see the telemetry server is running here. The server is running here. And um, so, we can shut down some interface here. You can see the interface will be monitored. Uh, uh, since we don't have much time, maybe like just flap the interface uh, right away. Uh, I have a script, like basically flap, uh, flapping one interface. I can flap five times, for example. Uh, as you can see, I, I'm monitoring this link, sp uh, link state. It's from uh, one of the database on the device. Uh, and you can see it's, it's flapping multiple times, five times, basically. And uh, I can also see this is a, this matrix is basically, if you look at how we use it, it's basically the, they have a like, very uh, sophisticated query language for this database. I can use just like changes of this operation state in the last one minute how many times it changed. So it will tell me uh, exactly how many times it changed, you know, just by, uh, by that simple language, right? So you can actually, based on this, you can define a rule, uh, like alerting for this rule. Basically, I have a rule here. Uh, it's already firing, actually, because uh, the, the rule is if this link flaps uh, for the 20, 20 seconds, I will send the tickets to my, to my email. Uh, and uh, I think it it will happen immediately uh, very soon. So I have a email here. I think the email should come. Yeah, right away. Yeah. So this this email basically tell me what happened on the network, right? Yeah, it's a ticket. It's, it's this uh, this switch, and this is uh, the interface flapped. Basically, I, I think maybe I should define it a bit more. Basically, it's link link link. F interface flaps on this switch and this port, right? Then you know exactly what happened, and you can go back, you know, or you can do whatever. For example, you can uh, shut down the interface if it's uh, actually happened uh, too many times. Okay, so the next one is the, uh, the routes, right? We can actually modern the routes as well. For doing the routes, I can see, uh, we can go like, uh, this is the FR we're running on the box. Uh, if you show IB routes, uh, actually, I have one route, for example, this route is, is configured to go through this next hop. Uh, I already monitored this route. By the way, you can monitor in like a, 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 all the routes, but in, in my case, actually, I just monitored this route. 
so where's the here? So here's as you can see, this is the next hop hunters is for this route. Uh, this ten uh, hundred dot one one dot zero slash twenty four, and uh, the ne next hop hundred is one, and I can uh, dynamically add, uh, for example, config. I can add uh, this route and another next hop here. And uh, with another next hop. Uh, here you should you should see the next hop for this route should be changed to two right away, right? And I can add one more, for example. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it becomes three. And uh, the one more thing I want to share, uh, I want to demo is actually, in this case, if I flap the interface, right, what happened? Uh, I can flap five times again. Too many windows here. Uh, as I see, the, the link is actually going up and down, right? And the, the the flap counters will go up uh, to all the way to five. And the, the, the other interesting part is this uh, next hop, right? Is also changing from three to two, three to two, because because that's that link is actually uh, is uh, the the that one of the next hop is actually using that link. So if the link is going down, that next hop is automatically re removed. So this is basically tracking the the real uh, routing data, right, on the network. You know, this is just one example. I mean, anything uh, like, uh, for example, if you le relearn the routes from a BGP or from FRR, you know, you were monitoring uh, here as well. This is just uh, one way to uh, to show this, right? So that's pretty much it for the demo, I think. Uh, Hello? Hello? Hi. Are you taking questions? Is it question time or? Uh, let me, to... just one more, another thing okay, uh, right. I want to show. Uh, uh, as I said, like uh, we have the uh, you know this uh, the rules. You know you can set these rules. You can set a lot of rules here. Like for example, if it flaps or routing, you reach some uh, threshold for some routing. Uh, you can actually send emails, send uh, Slack messages. You know it's very easy to integrate those uh, those things here. And uh, the other things, I mean, because it's a time series database, right? You can actually see what happened in the last uh, thirty seconds, or you can have the last twenty four hours. Uh, as a matter of fact, because I started this thing in the last two days, so this is the pretty much the data I have. I don't have any older data, right? If you look at last seven days, it's nothing before two days ago. So, yeah, that's it. Question time. I know. So you mentioned at the very beginning, or or maybe the, it was in one of the earlier slides about the relationship of it to GNMI. Yeah. And it says it it refers to it like is it using the the definitions within GNMI and OpenConfig, or is it just using that style of gRPC? Is it just using gRPC and you put your own query language on top of it? To so so I, I think that for configuration, we use GMI, right? Uh, uh, for the, yeah. So that's an interesting question. Um, so GMI does not enforce uh, uh, those uh, uh, OpenConfig uh, uh, your models. Right. As long as, as it is a tree-like uh, data model, that's okay. Uh, that happens, so the, the way we organize data in Sonic, so we have a different DB and different DB have a different table, okay. It is a tree-like stru structure. That's uh, why we could uh, use a lot of uh, GMR framework and to implement uh, uh, telemetry in Sonic. So it's not completely the same as GMR, but uh, we do refer a lot of the implementation and uh, design there. So, but if the, if, so gRPC is like your transport and then GNMI was trying to define like some of the the actions like get and set and subscribe and and whatever and then open config defined the the object model or the hierarchy right mm -hmm. and so are you using the similar actions as defined in GNMI or is it pretty much because I was trying to look at some of the URLs that you defined and and is it or is it pretty much gRPC used for the purposes of streaming telemetry like GNMI so for GNMI they define some subscribe or polling get set 
uh, basically in current uh, version of uh, sonic telemetry, uh, at least in the current uh, GitHub version, we support uh, get, uh, poll, and subscribe. Uh, we are missing set, uh, but we, also, uh, we are having uh, one PR, uh, which is to support set two. So uh, basically we support, uh, we're going to support all actions defined in GMR. And then another question, is there a sense of what you would stream out? Like, so I get that Sonic will, or, and will define a, an object or a, a tree hierarchy of, of any number of things or any number of counters that you can get out, you know, like a full MIB worth and all the different MIBs that you could get. Is there a sense of what things we should be streaming out? You know, because if I go to a, a standard MIB and assuming that you could stream out any of that, you'd have thousands of counters that we could be streaming off. Oh, I, uh, so I will answer this question from um, my perspective. So uh, at least uh, for our network operations, we are very interested in those uh, uh, route uh, neighbors. If, whenever that neighbor down, we want to be notified immediately. So we are interested in those kind of data. Of course, those uh, port uh, operation state up or down, that is uh, probably one of the most important uh, um, uh, event we are also using that uh, in, in the uh, gRPC telemetry. So there's a mechanism defined here, and it's sh you're showing some things you could export, but then it's up to the adopting or you know whoever uses it to decide which things underneath they decide to stream out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the way we organize the data in Sonic it gave us a lot of flexibility. So as long as we expose the path to the um, uh, operators, then they could just uh, pick up whatever they are interested in. So that's the flexibility we like uh, about uh, Sonic. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions? So we have a few more minutes. Um, we can open to general questions if you have to all today's sessions or other topics you would like to see. I had a quick question too, sorry, just, but if anyone else has a question, feel free to raise your hand, I'll shut up, so we'll hand it off, but, so on the receiving side, I, I saw you have like Grafana or whatever, kind of on the receiving side, but can you talk a little bit about the the pipelines that you have on, on the other side, like, that are going to scale, because assuming that you have, say, whatever, 10,000 switches streaming this telemetry, are you... Are you just leveraging other infrastructure in your company to absorb those pipe you know, as as a ingestion pipeline for the data? Uh, so oh, yeah. oh, yes, yes. I mean, uh, first of all, this this for example, this time series database. I mean, they can run as cluster, right? They can run uh, many many nodes and then uh, collect the data from different switches. And then on the back uh, back end, actually, we also have some other infrastructure. You know, transport data, for example, Kafka or different. Uh, infrastructure to translate data, yeah. That might be interesting to share at some point, not now obviously, but you know, the, I could imagine a future talk that people might be interested in to say, hey, on the on the pipeline side, we built out this big of a cluster and this is, this is how much data is coming in, right? Because just to compare, let's say, the old poll model to MIBs versus to say really how much work does it take to support streaming telemetry? Right, right, right. So at scale. Uh, right now, I mean, this is a, uh, the Sonic in production is not like, uh, I mean, it's um, still in the early stage, you know, not like a, a mass production, so it's not uh, enough switches to, to actually do justify just that act. But at, le at least in theory, we know SMP is slow. You know, if you, if you run like a, every few seconds on the device itself, it will crash. Basically, it will use all the in CPU. Uh, 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 power, power uh, processing cycles, right? So we know that it's not scalable. This is a, uh, from infrastructure point of view, I think it is really scalable, right? You can build these clusters, you can build those uh, GRPCs. Uh, yeah. We know like a big, uh, big companies, you know, like they are using all this data, uh, infrastructure, right? Yeah. Um, yeah let me let me just from this um, angle for your question to share the experience. Uh, you know, I think 
I think the, the current trend is that the, the, the cloud uh, networking is trying to, you know, moving away from the SMP all the way to collect the data, moving into the, the telemetries. You know, we're certainly building those infrastructure to do that. Um, I think the, um, the, you know, the, the, we would certainly, you know, the, one of the one of the things that the Sonic community is that it's currently mostly driven by, uh, you know, the cloud providers, uh, you know. Microsoft and other folks, uh, internet providers. So we certainly have those kind of experience to to share those experience uh, to the to the whole community. But I think that that's a good topic, and we you know we we certainly community can go back and then you know uh, get more experience and then you know try to decide you know how how do we share those uh, those those experience. That, I think that's a good suggestion. Thanks. From LinkedIn's perspective, I can say that in those initial architectural talks, discussions that we had, we did some arithmetic on it, and we found that the amount of data that we will be collecting from the switches, we can handle. LinkedIn's distributed infrastructure, the, the Lambda architecture that we'll be leveraging is capable of handling, it's not a big deal. We did some initial mathematics. But again, it's too early. Probably once we go full-fledged into it, we will probably do some processing on the device itself and uh, filter out the unnecessary noise or probably compress or do those things, but it's too early to say. Uh, I have a general question. Say, uh, we, if we want to uh, port the uh, Sonic into a new uh, hardware box, say whatever new hardware uh, box, Y box, so, Typically, how much time it would take? Like, say, uh, if I don't add new features, just existing whatever features, I just want to put to a new hardware platform. So it varies, but I will let uh, Gohan speak for it. Yeah. Yes, I think the question. There's a there's a few factors, right? So, for example, when you say new boxes, does it mean a new ASIC or existing ASIC that's already supported by, you know, Sonic? You know, that that's a difference, right? So we need to decide whether it's already supported ASIC or not. And then, you know, once it's already supported ASIC, I think, um, you know, we throughout the process we understand like, um, you know, there's certainly different kind of hardware designs choices that you made, um, for example, controlling the fan, controlling LED, BMC or not, uh, you know. Um, so th there's a lot of different choices in terms of uh, making those hardware, so I think, um, but, um, it, you know, generally I think uh, the less device you, you need to control, you know, for example, if you're a BMC, you have less device to control, less device driver to ride, so that's easier. Uh, but generally, if you look at, you know, um, I think counting the line of code that they have written to provide those drivers and also the plugins, uh, I think it's not, uh, it's not that too much. I think compared, you know, you can count those code and they are, they are already available, but based on the, you know, number of codes that you write, I think it's, and I, and I think, you know, um, based on the previous talk, the, the driver we ask the platform vendors to write is simply exposing those hardware registers to the CFS. So it's, um, it's relatively uh, straightforward to write those. There's no uh, complex logics to, in order to implement the drivers. It's basically, you know, mapping those those registers into the CSFS, so that's relatively straightforward. But I don't have a concrete timeline, but it depends on, you know, your engineering is uh, how familiar with the kernel driver development, those kind of things, yeah. Uh, 